It is the grand finale now. Finally, we've come to the end of it. And uh, this is what you could describe as the final of the final. It is the last game, the 15th game. And uh, there's five days of football extravaganza uh, the main bowl of the Abuja National Stadium. And it is fittingly, perhaps, the two national teams that come against each other. The dream team, the under-23 national team, taking on the Flying Eagles, the under-20 national team of Nigeria. And that's the point of contention. That is the trophy that is up for grabs. Well, it would seem that uh, the final result was already known in terms of who emerged champions here. The Flying Eagles can no longer be beaten. But I'll tell you something. The under-23 team, Dream Team 6, uh, have uh, quite something up their sleeves here. We did see them perform. They didn't do too badly, but surely they were not as enchanting as the under-20 team. They were not as captivating as the under-20 national team. They were not as smooth and fluid as the Flying Eagles were. But they probably want to end it on a flourish here because we expect some changes to be wrong on the side of the dream team. Remember, while they were playing here, another dream team was away in Tunisia involved in a couple of friendlies against their Tunisian counterparts. That is already history. Suffice it to remind you, of course, that they won one of the games and lost one. They were beaten 5-2 in the first game, 5-3 actually, and then they won the second one by a resounding three unreplied goals. The bulk of those players have been reinfused in the team here, and you expect to see quite a drastic change. Look at the teams, the names there. Daniel Emmanuel Daniel is there. Sincere Mwefu uh, was not in the country all this while. We also have uh, Azubiko Kachuku, uh, who Abano takes over the captain's armband. Shegu Odudua is there. Tiongoli Tombra is also there. Uh, we have Etebo Ogene Karu. Olua Femi Ajayi, and of course, Godwin Savior. A totally different looking team from what we saw in the course of the tournament here. That Dream Team 6, what it has turned into. The match officials, the center referee for the day is Anietia Udo. Uh, he's from Akwaibom State, a FIFA referee. Assistant number one, Ebel Baba from Kogi State, another FIFA referee. And the second assistant, Isa Usman from Katina State, yet a FIFA referee. The fourth official, Benjamin O'Day from the FCT, and the match commissioner is Cletus Chie from Taraba State. And for the Flying Eagles, much unchanged. You have a Naholo Joshua who is in goal. Musa Mohammed, the inimitable Musa Mohammed, is the captain, of course. Mustafa Abdullahi, Akintide Dowu, Ifani Ifani, Obin Namwobodo, the mesmerizing boy that took everybody by storm in his last game, where he started, he's starting again today. You have Prince Agri, Bernard Bulbwa, Bello Zaharuddin, uh, Shahid Abdul Ghanil, as well as uh, that irrepressible Taiwo Abuni. Quite a team they have here, quite an entertainment they've put up. They've stolen everybody's heart, and let's see whether they maintain it to the end. Well, the nation has two, basically, uh, two basic uh, colors in which they play. That man, too, is back from Tunisia. He has taken over. It was Fatah Mao next to him who ran the show here until Samson Siasia came back to the country. Now he is in the chair. Samson Siasia, ex Super Eagles, of course, himself. Well, the two sides here are playing in white. One side playing in white with green trimmings, the other in green with white trimmings. And of course, it is the dream team that will be playing in all green attire with those white trimmings. Manu Garba, well, he took Nigeria to win the Under-17 World Cup in the United Arab Emirates a couple of years ago, and uh, he has moved up to the Under-20. He is now the coach of the Under-20 team uh, of Nigeria, the Flying Eagles. We're ready to go. All things are set. It is time for the big kickoff. The kickoff that will determine which of these two teams is better prepared for continental battles that uh, are in front of them. It is the dream team that takes the kickoff. They're playing in green from right to left of your screen, and the flying eagles from left to right of your screen. 
you can expect the, the Dream Team 6 to show that uh, now they are in full strength and uh, they are not going to play second fiddle to these their younger brothers any longer. But I'm sure the well-blended, well-rehearsed on the 20 team might have a thing or two to say about that. Taiwa <laughs> Awuni still the spearhead of the Nigerian attack. A tall, strapping young man. The dream team, Christopher Madaki. And there they come again, racing down the line now. God will save you. And they still come forward, the free kick to the dream team. Free kick to the dream team. The man that was tripped there. He was uh, making a beeline for the opponent's goal, Ogene Karoye Tebo. And the culprit has been declared to be Saeed Abdul Ghaniyu. That's supposed to be an indirect free kick. To the dream team and this perhaps is where the real metal of the flying eagles will be tested this is undeniably the biggest test for them thus far they may have won the tournament they may have garnered an unassailable 12 points but perhaps uh, the dream team might just be able to peg them back down to that 12 and uh, move up to 11 themselves if they were to win this clearly crucial game free kick and it's taken direct rather tamely by Azubiko Kechuku another new name that's featuring on the part of the dream team not a very free, a very good free kick a lot of football followers must have been salivating already about this game it is always going to be looking like it's going to be the match uh, that brings together these two national sides. The referee says, no, you take the ball from the right place, he's uh, Dumbra. Newman Dumbra, he's been effervescent in the games he's played so far. Really entertaining, really... Oh, look at that pass. Now the boys are talking. The big boys are into the game. And what a movement there. It's not over yet. It's sent across, and that should be a goal. It's same. What an approach and what an opening from the dream team. Well, that's what you've been waiting for. There you have it now. It is those two sides entertaining to the fullest. Manu Garba, a wry smile on his face. And uh, he doesn't seem to think that uh, all had gone well with those moves. That move was started by Ulua Sheya Jai, the number 11 shirt for the green clad dream team. A deft back heel pass, and uh, that set the move on. But the flying eagles not finding it easy at all. You can see the way the dream team are moving. Tiondoli Tombra. Still on the front foot, they come again. And uh, the ball is pushed almost into, well, that ball had actually been kept in. Uh, good anticipation from Joshua Enaholo in goal for the Flying Eagles. Taiwo Awoni fighting to retrieve that ball. He was the superstar all along, but now he has got to contend with uh, quite a few other superstars on the opposite side. Taiwo Awoni, he surely has his work cut out for him here now. The opening five minutes of uh, the final encounter, match number 15 on day five of uh, the 2014 Invitational, uh, 2015 rather it is, Super 4 Invitational. The two best performing sides in the tournament up against each other in the final. And ball sent across the flag safe. Well, it finally goes up. The flag went up rather late. 
It was Prince Agri who was running towards that one, but the assistant referee waited until he made contact with the ball before lifting his flag. Finally, the final goal seemed to be getting it together. Dumbra with the ball backwards. It is Agri. Finagles looking for a way through. That pass from Saeed Abdelganiu blocked to give away a throw in to the Flying Eagles. Taiwa Wuni has got a real work to do here because uh, this defense line led by that man, the skipper of the side, Erhuma Bano, would seem to be much stronger than what he had come up to so far in the tournament. Flying Eagles yet to find their feet really in this game. They seem to be gradually getting it, uh, getting into it, but it's the dream team that took off like a house on fire here. And now Holo. With the ball for the Flying Eagles. The bull team down of the Flying Eagles. Oh, Bano not giving any quarters. Very solid defense line of uh, the dream team. Well and truly with matters in hand. The referee says play on. Bano again. Getting the ball forward. This is really going to be a test. And there they go down the line. The ball rolled forward. And perhaps he should have taken it right on the run there. And another one, a good cross coming, but not so good uh, from uh, that man, Christopher Madaki. He has played all the four games so far for the Dream Team in this tournament, Madaki. There it is, the Dream Team coming forward, and well stopped, masterfully done. The referee says that's in order, that's legit, and uh, the Flying Eagles beginning to infuse some strength and power into their game as well. Not taking any prisoners, and uh, you can understand that this is the do or die battle for them. How they would want to get uh, one over this man's side, the Flying Eagles. They would like to get uh, one trump their elder brothers, as it were, by beating them here this afternoon. It's not going to be very easy, though, because uh, we see a very strong, solid, and uh, confident uh, dream team. Ball ruled forward by the flag again. Going up there and uh, catching a big fish, Prince Agri. Man that's brought up short. No dull moments in this game so far. Ninth minute we are into and uh, goalless it is, but uh, quite an entertaining game. And uh, we were just wondering here if the two sides had met before in any game at all. Oh, that's the flying eagle breaking away now. And the ball cross just couldn't get to it there. Oh, so close. And any touch from Taiwan when he surely would have resulted in a goal there. He was that close and yet too far away. And a great run and a great cross coming. Taiwan when he's just stretching there but not being able to reach the ball. And Obin Nongwobodo a bit too far away from it. I wonder what goalkeeper Emmanuel Daniel would have been able to do there. But uh, a corner kick by Musa Mohammed, captain of the side, headed away. He has a second bite on the cherry. And a good one. And well, I wonder he came forward and stopped. I, I don't know what happened. Maybe the ball was just a little too quick for him. But it's his uh, traditional scoring position. That's where he found himself. Just couldn't convert that time. He should have scored twice in two minutes. <laughs> if those uh, chances had just come in quick succession like that, because both were scoring, but the first one he was sliding in, it didn't work out the second one. Like you said, the second one, he should have headed that ball. Uh, inexplicably, he went forward and uh, stopped. 
It's uh, the Dream Team, Neil, the Flying Eagles, Neil. Top two battling in this competition. And that's the first 10 minutes gone by. Corner kick to the Dream Team. Tiondoli Tumbra with a corner kick. Well, somebody in a green shirt headed the ball away. And uh, ball sent in there by Madaki. Well, you can see how in control, how very much in control there uh, the Dream Team seem to be. Karo Etebo it will prove to be a handful for the Flying Eagles to contend with here. Ogene Karo Etebo, the man that is donning the number eight jersey for the Dream Team. Abdullahi, ball forward. And that's the man that uh, took everybody by a storm in the first game. Not a great pass from him, Obi Namogudo. Team. A table. He asked for a return, he got it. And uh, possession changed places very quickly here. And it is the dream team coming forward now. Taking the ball away, that's a steal. And still, Abdullahi is not given any quarters at all, but the referee says that was still a little bit uh, too strong. <laughs> Ndukao a legend in his own right, played for Nigeria in 1985 where they won the trophy in China for the under-17s. But a player who was dispossessed there is Bielsa United winger Tombara Tiongoli, young star, and he ends a free kick for the Dream Team in a dangerous position. Who is going to swing this one in? It's Okechuku Azubike, his teammate at Bayelsa United. The referee has something to say to two of the players inside the box. One of them, Ogene Karoye Tebo. Rode across and headed away by Musa Muhammad. Visionary player he is. The referee says play on. Flying Eagles thought it was handballed there by the Dream Team. He said, no, you play ahead. Go right on. There's nothing wrong with that. And uh, interestingly, the two captains of the two sides, the two captains are in jersey number two. There it is. The Dream Team streaming away down looking to get either a cross or a corner getting neither but uh, still not giving up Godwin Savior very solid and the flying eagles taking it easy finally lashing the ball away perhaps they should have sent it that earlier but it is the dream team on the front foot surely now with 61 percent of the possession they are in the driving seat And uh, Anieta Odo goes to his pocket for the first time in this encounter. And the player who has been penalized is the Rangers International of Enugu midfielder Obi Nangwobudu. Youngster, he doesn't look happy with the decision, but he's got a long way to go yet in his career. Well, Obi when you do things like that, you get booked. That could have turned out to be a big, serious injury for Okechuku Azubuike. Samson Siasia back in the dugout for the under 23 side. And uh, his 45 team really with their best performance so far in this tournament. Why would he get that pass right? Oh, that looked quite uh, cynical to me. That looks cynical to me because uh, 
you could see that Bernard Bulbwa was almost leaving his man for dead before he decided to throw himself at him. And it should be a wonder if Christopher Madaki escapes unscathed here. Uh, it's not quite over yet. The referee says, come along, I have something for you. It's a yellow card. He expected it, I'm sure. And uh, that's why he pretended to have been uh, more injured than he was. Christopher Madaki picking up the second booking in this game. One apiece now. Uh, had this been a more competitive match, like in the league, he probably might have been sent off because he was the last defender and the player he felt was through on goal. Well, the referees here seem to have applied uh, most of the rules in the regular game here, except uh, where it concerns substitution, the number of substitutions allowed. So he just maybe didn't see that. But the referee says play on here. The dream team trying to initiate another attack. Is that man who was showing some exquisite ball sense to Lua Femi Ajayi? is in jersey number 11 for the dream team well we'll keep reminding you of your names and their jersey numbers from time to time here because their names actually are not written on the back of their jerseys so it could get a little confusing sometimes that is the eagles now the dream team rather uh, because they are both flying eagles on the 23 they are both eagles on the 23 eagles and the flying eagles and so we separate them by saying the Flying Eagles and the Dream Team. Racing forward, Musa Mohammed. Well, gets to that one. Handball claimed, handball not given. And Bernard Bubwa. Oh, that ball went behind the one. He, he tried to backhill it. It was almost impo actually impossible then. But the effort was there. And here they come again. The Flying Eagles. They can look enchanting sometimes. And now is one of those times. They are not giving up yet. Still in possession. And uh, the Dream Team. Well, they, are, they will be well advised to be careful. You don't trifle with these young men because they've uh, met their mark here. The flag stayed down. I thought that uh, Akinjide came in from uh, a suspiciously offside position. But the play continues, and now the flag indeed does go up. I think the referee is right. I think it was offside. The fans don't seem to think so. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, this and, was uh, uh, Musa Mohammed who started that and when the cross came in, eventually it was uh, Sincere Wenfu who got rid of the ball, but that was clear and present danger posed by the Flying Eagles. Looking at a very good game here, 15 ends to this tournament. Another rather reckless challenge from the Flying Eagles. I think it's Bernard Bulbo at that time that's the culprit. Bernard Bulbo, the man who, well, that was very dangerous play, has to be said. Very, very dangerous play. And uh, it was Newman Dumbra. Oh, that's actually Savior God, who was upended. That's the earlier chance. And when this cross came in, it was uh, Sincere Wenfu, sincerely keeping his team in the game. Perhaps uh, the dream team, uh, the two sides actually, but uh, that was over enthusiastic. And the referee says, take it easy, calm down. Uh, this is nothing to die about. And uh, the flying eagles start another attack and foray. These are their passes very easily cut off, uh, just like uh, the dream team's pass also has been cut off on that occasion. He's already on a yellow card. He wants to be very careful. He can go into a game full force. 
So it's 20 minutes into this feisty final match of the Super 6, and it is the Dream Team nil, Flying Eagles nil. Several goal opportunities created, none taken as yet. And it's Tombara Tiongoli who is uh, checking on his general well-being. It's a hard contact game football, and Manu Garba utilizing the opportunity to talk to his team. It's been another successful campaign for Madagarba. And you can see what happened there to Tiongoli. That's a clash between Tombara Tiongoli and uh, Obina Wobodo. Obina Wobodo, he, he, he has to really be very careful here. He's got the first booking of this encounter. And uh, it's early days yet to get challenging for another bookable offense. He wants to finish this game. And there we have quite some fans in the stadium now. This is the game everybody would want to see. It's a huge stadium here, and uh, on the on our the stadium, quite some turnout. Abdullahi, Abdullahi again, pulling the strings from the middle. Bulbwa, Mwobodo. The flying eagles seem to be settling down now. Well, the dream team may have had the better of the exchanges in terms of possession. But the Flying Eagles have come closer to scoring. Uh, they've had two very clear chances, neither of which they were able to take. Musa Mohammed, he is very quick. And uh, he decides to go for a throw in. Flying Eagles winning a corner kick. The first corner kick in the game. Coming to the Flying Eagles. Musa Mohammed with the corner. A little jostling and uh, milling around inside the 18 yard box. And Mohammed delivers a good one and almost getting his head to it there. And uh, that shot was wide. But I think that that was uh, Sa Saida Abdul Ghani who almost got his head to that ball. I think that that Mustafa Abdullahi Mustafa Abdullahi uh, with a, a beautiful delivery there and uh, it could have resulted in something for the Flying Eagles but uh, halfway through the first half of the game it's still goalless between these two sides Dream Team nil, Flying Eagles nil Game number 15, final game of the Obinna Wobodo going in with another launch. He wants to be very careful. And uh, that could easily have been interpreted as something else by the referee. Yes, he may have had uh, a stellar performance, a stellar outing in the last game he played Obinna Wobodo. Uh, but uh, he's playing against uh, the real deal now. And he wants to be quite careful. They were practically cruising against Dolphins in that uh, final game of uh, day four, which they won by four goals to one. But this is not even the dream team that started the tournament. This is the real thing. A good pass coming over. Dream team still matching onto that ball. And, uh, a pass sent across there. Christopher Madaki. Uh, but in the end, it's. No problem for goalkeeper Joshua Enaholo. Taiwo is uh, set free there, and uh, the pass was just too strong. It was meant for Prince Agri, but he put too much on it, and uh, it ran away from Agri straight into the very grateful hands of Emmanuel Daniel. Emmanuel Daniel, of course, goalkeeper for Global Premier League side Rangers International of Enugu. 
joined in 2013 after a very acrimonious transfer from Shooting Stars First Club of Ibadan. How easy does it? Bernard Bubua takes care of his man. He wants to take care of a second. It's not going to be very easy. He does that intelligently and still takes his time. He sends it across. It was meant to be a hit for Dumbra, but intervention from the Dream Team. This surely is a different proposition altogether. God will save you there with very, very timely tackle. And uh, that may have made the difference between conceding a goal and not uh, conceding any. Uh, the, the, the skill shown to get past uh, his man there was superb. And uh, this was not a cross to match his earlier effort and substitution. It is Peter Onyekachi, the man who plays for Globe Premier League side, Abia Warriors that has taken the place of Olua Femi Ajayi. This might uh, probably have to do with an injury because I thought he was putting in a decent shift Ajayi before he was substituted. Player down on the top is Savior Godwin, not for the first time in this first half, but he looks okay and ready to continue. Supporters Club making music in the background. The whole atmosphere, one of uh, thorough enjoyment. You can see the fans here are having the time of their lives and they pass looking for Taiwa Awoni. Awoni looks around and he sets the ball. Oh, great pass there. And the flying eagles on the cusp of something. And the flying eagles against the run of play. They know how to finish this. And Manu Garba said he yeah. wanted to improve the finishing of his side. He seems to have done so. Prince Agri, what a goal that was. A finish worthy of a first goal in such a game. Emmanuel Daniel looking shell shocked, but it didn't look that way. This team has been threatening this goal for quite a while. Prince Agre sent off after scoring in the first game of this competition. Look at that. The ball played into him. Coolness personified that when he just finds his man. We thought the angle was too acute, but he knew exactly what he wanted to do. As soon as the goalkeeper committed himself, he rolled it under his uh, frying body, and that uh, has given them the lead. I thought the defender was going to get there, but Agri was always, always in control of that one. Finishes with a plumb, and it's the Dream Team nail, Flying Eagles 1. You can see their confirmation of that scoreline goal coming after 28 minutes, and despite all the early pressure, the champions of the Super Six are the side who lead. Indeed, uh, the possession actually lay with the Dream Team all along since kickoff, but uh, the Flying Eagles have come closer to scoring. They may well have gotten three goals already here, but uh, the Dream Team perhaps just are still trying to gel after the combo and that's uh, Bulboa, Bernard Bulboa. Oh, look at that! Bubwa was so unselfish, but the flag had gone up. It wouldn't have counted, but that should have been a sumptuous finish. If the flag went up, I would like to know what for. But again, wonderful link of play. But, but that, that was more or less <laughs> taking the ball out of the net. He was right on the line and still contrived to miss a very, very open goal. Again, Obin Namobodo just uh, escaping the referee's wrath. Dumbra almost bested there with the flying eagles. They're trying to put it together again. And there they come. Obin Namobodo, he shoved off the ball. Upper body strength failed him there, and the referee says, play on. Savior now for the Dream Team. And from Savior, it is pushing forward. Azubi Kiyo Kechuku. 
Now, sincere Mwenfu. Flying Eagles uh, since taking over, trying to find a way out. Prince Agre. His pass was poor, but he stayed on with that ball. The flag stays down, and the Flying Eagles come again. It is Taiwa Awani, and Awani decides to go for goal. He could have sent the ball across. His man was racing in there and was saying, almost begging him to let him have the ball. He did not do that. That was a little selfish of Taiwo Awani. But in truth, uh, with the amount of chances Taiwo Awani has had in this competition, he should be talking about the top scorer position. Uh, but uh, uh, as skillful as he is, as dangerous as he is, it does appear he's a young man, a rough gem that needs uh, punishing. He was all alone here, and unfortunately... Well, unfortunately for them, uh, the equalizer has come, and it looked quite simple. It's the newcomer, the man that came on, Peter Onyekachi is his name. He came on to take the place of Olua Femi Ajayi, and he's just... Uh, well, rolled in, bundled in, perhaps, uh, but the equalizer nonetheless. It is <laughs> even on us now. Yeah, and uh, very coolly done. When the cross came initially, it didn't look like there was much danger there. Went to the far post, uh, Savior Godwin's head up, brought it back, and that was not the best defender from Zaharadim Belu, it has to be said. Because Onyakachi, surprised to see himself with the ball at his feet, simply swung his leg and the ball was in the net. So after 32 minutes, it's the Dream Team 1, the Flying Eagles 1. And we've got more to come. The game is living up to its billing. Flying Eagles drawing first blood. The Dream Team coming back on even terms in a matter of four minutes. And what a response that was. Free kick. I saw it coming all the way, Abdullahi. And uh, for some reason, Tundali Tumbara is not happy with him and thinks he went down too easily. Samson Siasia here, always looking cool as cucumber. And the flying eagles come forward again. The referee says play on. He didn't see anything wrong with that. Center referee Anya Teudo, very experienced referee, a FIFA referee, and uh, that's what we respect from him. God will save you. Almost beaten. Bulboa. The flying eagles come again. Mwobudo. Mwobudo, a far side. He was looking for Prince Agre. Gets to the ball. Taiwa Awoni a little bit far away from him. But the flying eagles. Awoni tried to make that a one-two. Second time, he got a third bite on the cherry. And the flying eagles still get one more bite on that cherry. Obi Nongobodo this time. He sends the ball across. Perhaps a poor first touch. And they're going down. Nothing is going to come of that. A good spell of effort there from the flying eagles. It'd have been super going forward in this competition. But uh, if there is uh, one criticism, that uh, could be leveled at them is the fact that at times they appear to take too many touches in critical areas. But it is a shot down, a stop a second time, and stop a second time. Great goalkeeping, and Nahuala simply unbeatable there. And what an effort that was from Ogene Karetebo. Twice he hit it, twice he was thwarted, and great goalkeeping. We also need to say that twice he didn't get the right sort of purchase because the Ogene Karia Tebo we know would have lashed that effort home first time. And the first time for the hit lacked a lot of power and the second one was even worse. But this was good early play from Peter Onyekachi there. Savior Godwin rolled it across. You can see a Tebo there just smashed that ball into the back of the net. He got the second bite and again he came off his shins and allowed us and Nahala to make uh, a double save but very good zip about this game so far well this game surely was worth waiting for the two sides finally coming head to head here and what an entertainment they provided thus far the dream team Begin to initiate another attack. Madaki in 
ensuring the ball doesn't go into touch. It's Madaki again. It's around and uh, pushes the ball forward to Azubiko Kechuku. Long pass coming through. Musa Mohammed, very calm, composed, not panicking at all. And Musa Mohammed there uh, racing onto that one. Another pass going to Bubwa. Musa Mohammed now on the overlap. He sends it too close to the goalkeeper. The intention was clear there. You know what, uh, but with this 20 goals team, they are going to be very difficult to beat. They might not be the best defending, and you can see how balanced uh, this game has been. 50-50, the possession, the scoreline, 1-1, one -one, chances at both ends. But I was just talking about the flying goals. They are so explosive when they go forward uh, that you're, you're so worried uh, with the attacking play that you hardly have time to defend against it. And then they come again, and uh, Awuni was trying to do perhaps a little too much. Prince Agri expected the ball. But uh, Prince Ake was very carefully marched, marked by Sincere Memphu. Uh, he may not have been able to get that ball as easily as he thought. And when he plays for Kalma Football Club in Sweden, he scored a similar goal against uh, Canopilas in this competition when he turned Ruben Obuna inside out and uh, rolled the ball inside the far post. That time it didn't work out for him because uh, he didn't get the final effort going at all. Daiwa when he manages to get the pass across to Prince. Prince Agri is waiting in the middle. Obi Namobodo was waiting for the ball to get to him. And uh, it wasn't going to get to him, especially when you had Ogene Kare Tebo to contend with. Peter Onyekachi, scorer of the equalizer, is the man that's brought down a free kick. Quickly taken by the Dream Team. Azubike Okechuku, Madaki, Opano, ball forward to Shegu Odudua. Well, that was a rather poor pass from Newman Dombra. A little bit subdued in this game. Perhaps the bigger boys have come into play. Dombra was uh, the center of uh, activity in almost all the previous games played by the Flying Eagles. The ball is kept in there. And the pass coming across, a very good pass for that matter. Uh, Prince Agri just had the ball taken off his foot there. A very aggressive Agri. He's hungry for the ball. He wants the ball every time. And uh, he's showing us how lethal he can be. Another corner kick to the Flying Eagles. Manuel Daniel looking around to make sure everything is uh, ship shape. Uh, the corner kick, not the best of deliveries, fell short. And uh, fortunately for the Dream Teams, stripped away by Ogene Karoya Tebo. It was Peter Onyekachi who couldn't keep it in. And Onyekachi is uh, having a good run in the national side after his stellar first season in the top flight with Abia Warriors, a team that's now been decimated because the top stars have all departed to other teams. Sometimes the Flying Eagles can be very deliberate with their approach. As uh, that moment, they take it easy, they interchange passes, they try to set up the killer pass. Sometimes it does come, sometimes it does not. Savior for the Dream Team. Ball forward by Okechuku. Dumbra now. Still on the front foot. And a good run from Tiondali Tombara. The referee says it's a, it's a corner kick to the Dream Team. Sahid Abdul Ghaniyu was the player who put that ball into touch. Tumbara with the ball and the header misdirected. It's going to be a goal kick. Onyakashi is really putting himself about, and he's a big young lad. So, causing him problems. So, 
with five minutes to go before halftime is the Dream Team one, the Flying Eagles one on Yekachi after 32 minutes equalizing at that earlier effort from Prince Agri. Flying Eagles come flying again. Abdullahi uh, he took his eye off the ball for a split second there, and that was enough. The Flying Eagles, the Dream Team taking over. Dumbra, the ball forward. He was looking there for a Tebo. Uh, the ball was intercepted. Bulbwa. Savior coming in with a full body challenge. Ehun Obano doing it the old fashioned way. Obano, of course, a member of the Nigerian team that won the African Nations Cup last year in South Africa. That's now 2013, actually. Plays for insurance in Benin. Still gets invited to the Super Eagles, but never really getting to play. This time he's been handed uh, the reins as captain of the under 23 team, the Dream Team. There he is to Okechuku. Okechuku sends the ball forward. Well, again, Peter Onyekachi is the man that uh, goes down. He's received a few knocks already since coming on as a substitute in place of uh, that uh, Lua Femi Ajayi. And that was good skill to get past Musa Mohammed, who stuck out. Uh, his boot on top of Onyakachi's ankle. Well, what we're seeing here on the side of the Dream Team is essentially the team that lost narrowly to their Tunisian counterparts in Tunis and that took them to the cleaners in the second game, which they won by three unreplied goals. But here, they have their hands full against their younger counterparts, the Flying Eagles. And Bo, you, you, you seem to suggest that 5-3 is a sleep and narrow loss. <laughs> well, narrow certainly by the margin by which the home side lost the second game, because they were beaten 3-0 in the second game. And uh, considering the Eagles were playing away, I think that, that uh, counted a lot more than that 5-3 initial victory. You could say they were suffering from jet lag. Obviously. And uh, Bernard Bubwa come forward again. The flag finally goes up a bit late, and uh, the assistant referee wanted to be sure what he was doing. That must be the worst moment for an attacker when you think you're through on goal. And that flag comes off to cut short your movements. Sincere Wenfu, looking very sincere, gets up after he was upended. We just have a minute and a half to the interval here. It's been a rip roaring first half, filled with goal mouth action, but we're still all square. Well, Kalechi, rip roaring it may have been, but uh, sincere. To get up immediately, he saw that uh, nothing was going to go wrong because <laughs> he went down when there was real danger of their conceding a goal. That didn't quite uh, sound so sincere to me. But again, it is that man's savior alongside Ogerekare Etebo and uh, the newcomer Peter Onyekachi. The three of them have suffered a lot of solid challenges from the Flying Eagles. That's one more of them, and the free kick going the way of the Dream Team. Sevio, I think he is the butt of all these challenges because he's got a lot of skill in him. His turn of pace is just uh, frightening and uh, he's been a problem to handle for the Flying Eagles. Reprieve of uh, sorts for the Flying Eagles to get a free kick and that will ease, slightly ease the pressure on them. Because a lot was beginning to happen in their half of the field and they want to perhaps as quickly as possible get the ball across to the other side and uh, at least ensure that the first half 
ends on even kill here because we've seen 45 minutes now and we are into added time two minutes injury time and two minutes to be played out by these two sides before they take a well-deserved 15 minute rest two minutes but still enough enough time for some further damage to be done by either side with the flying eagles that are racking off the free kicks now Another one, Obi Nungobudo was the man that was brought down there. Uh, he may have earned a yellow card in this uh, game, but he doesn't seem to have dampened his enthusiasm any. The Flying Eagles are still looking to probe further forward, looking for a way through, taking it easy, exercising patience, looking disciplined, but that ball just onto the head of Godwin Savior. Flying goes with a corner kick. Corner kick and the final minute of added time to the Flying Eagles. And not bet against them scoring. They've been good with every part of football, including set pieces. And Musa Mohammed, he knows how to drive them in. Drive that one in. He did perhaps a little too far away. The referee noticed something. Perhaps uh, a player was taking a ride on the back of another. I think the culprit there must be the number 14 jersey for the Flying Eagles, Prince Agri. But Agri gets to the ball first before Bulboa. Dream Team, surely the final attacking move now if they were to go forward, but they are taking their time. Finally, is driven forward and falls to them. It's a good opportunity. A shot called for. A shot to the last foot. Not a good purchase. And Godwin, well, Godwin saved you. The referee says it's a penalty. It is a penalty to the Dream Team. And uh, quite amazingly, you can see the way Zaharadin Bello is uh, reacting to that. It may well be a kinji day, but uh, it will be clear in a moment. Manu Garba not amused. And that looks a bit confusing when the ball came across here. It was Xavier Godwin who struck that shot well. I do see what uh, Mr. Anieto Odo saw. Maybe that was not the intention, but he did. He did give that ball a handful. And to be quite fair, it may well have been the intention because uh, it's difficult to tell what's in the mind of a man. But a penalty call there, quite in order. Uh, you would expect them to put away this one and go into the break in the lead. It's Ogene Karetebo. He has proved, he has asked questions, he has uh, shot at goal. And uh, finally, he does get an opportunity. The referee making sure everybody stays right behind the 80 yard line. Uh, then that's what he's gone across to ensure. A turbo now. It's a turbo against the Naholo. It is the final second. In fact, the half, first half should be over already. But don't get a career table. It takes one, two, three, two steps and really into the roof of the net. Unstoppable penalty. Struck with venom. Struck with intent. And he puts his side up and two goes to Neil Lydia going into the half time. And this is the first time it has to be said that the flying eagles have been behind in this Super 6. He gave the goalkeeper the eyes and rifled that one right into the roof. And now a lot tried to go with him, but the pace and power was just too much. He could not do anything to keep that out. It's the way to take the penalties, smash them high, and the keepers won't get there. It's Dream Team 2, the Flying Eagles of 1. And you expect that uh, as soon as the kickoff is taken, yes, the final whistle, it has come, the final whistle for the first half. It is all over the first 45 minutes here. And because of halftime, uh, you could see the Dream Team take the lead from the penalty spot, well dispatched by Ogene Karoye Tebo. And of course, uh, that puts them 2 1 up. Samson Siasia, well, a bigger looking Samson Siasia now than the one we used to know. Uh, <laughs> it seems to have uh, brought the magical touch back to his side he's back from tunisia the bigger boys are back and the under 23 team just making a statement here but it's not been easy for them the under the under 20 side the flying eagles they have given almost as good as they've taken in this game every single one of them has done so well but the dream team going into that half really have proven that 
they are not quite the dream team that started this tournament. And you could see that in every touch on that ball from them. Looking stronger, looking more solid, looking more confident, but still having quite a battle to do in the second half here. It has ended in the first half. The dream team of Nigeria 2, Flying Eagles of Nigeria 1. Namwobudo, Abdullahi, all of them re-strategizing. Akinjide is also there. They're trying to find a way to unlock the defense of these, their elder brothers, as it were. And uh, they've not done badly in the first half. They've actually controlled dominated possession 52% to 48. Well, the trophy gallanted there, just waiting for who will pick it up. And uh, that surely is the final goes now. The Golden Eaglets, uh, the Dream Team brother, <laughs> won't be regretting having gone to Tunisia with half of their numbers. But they are back now and the difference has begun to tell. The fans here, they've been having a wonderful time. Quite an appreciable turnout of spectators. They knew what to look forward to. They wanted to be part of history. This is the first time the two national sides are being part of the Super 4. And uh, that's why the name has uh, slightly altered to the Super 4 Invitational. Quite some crowd here, quite some attendance. And that is all because they wanted to be part of this epoch-making of event, this great occasion, and uh, to be part of the celebration of football here at the Abuja National Stadium. It really has been wonderful. And uh, Manu Garba and his team, Nduka Ukbade, the bench, the Flying Eagles bench, uh, there, they must have uh, had a few words to say to the boys at halftime, and uh, you can see the look of determination on the faces of the Dream Team players as they come back on. They really want to win this one and make a bold statement. Uh, if we had been as full as we are now, well, we surely would have lifted the trophy. The trophy, of course, going to the Flying Eagles. Uh, it should go to them because they've won the, the tournament uh, so far. But uh, Peter Onyekachi. That's the man that got the first goal, the equalizer for the Dream Team. The Flying Eagles in a huddle. They need divine intervention to be able to hold this very strong, very good Dream Team side at bay. And uh, all that will unfold in the next 45 minutes. Well, the Flying Eagles not done yet. Finally, they seem to have gotten the inspiration they need. Obin Namwobodo, the Rangers international man on a yellow card. And uh, so also is Christopher Madaki for the Dream Team. Joshua Enaholo beaten there twice. He has been beaten. Emmanuel Daniel beaten once. The two goalkeepers have given a good account of themselves. But, well, Joshua Enaholo was unfortunate the way he considered that equalizer because it was not a shot. It was not even uh, such a, 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 an angle shot that I think he was just wrong-footed and went scrabbling after the ball and failing to get it. It's the Flying Eagles with the kickoff, and they want to start building again now. Gradually, Ifani, Ifani giving the pass across, and coming forward, Bernard Bulboa impeded, and in the process, pulled his man, and giving away a free kick to the Dream Team. A Dream Team player is down. They need some attention. The referee was about to pull out his yellow card, seemed to change his mind. And, uh, well, Bernard Bubu had been sufficiently apologetic. I have a feeling that's what saved him on that occasion. Otherwise, Christopher Madaki, the man he brought down. He would have sought vengeance, but it's the dream team. Flying Eagles, not a very good touch to the ball. And when he, the way he took care of that man and almost took care of a second. He's an intelligent player. And the way he does it, you would know that it's not just about uh, being skillful. He uses his head as well. And that's more important, actually, for, to a footballer than raw skills. Well, it reminds you of uh, the, the, the inimitable Wanko Kano. Uh, but still early days yet, as far as uh, Taiwa Wani is concerned, a lot of intelligence involved in his play, but he needs to get in more amongst the goals. He needs to do that. So Kalechi's submission is that the jury is still out on Taiwa Wani and uh, we would see how that unfolds with time. I don't know why I get this feeling that the two sides are going to be a little bit more cautious this second half. 
they are not going to be as carefree as they apparently were in the first half. And that a foul. And somehow, Musa Mohammed seems to have uh, come off the worst in that clash. The referee says, uh, get up. It's going to be a flying Eagles free kick. Well, I think both ball and uh, boot brushed uh, the side of Musa Mohammed's cheek. He's not a player who is given to diving, so he felt the force of that. The flying Eagles, Batik Clearance Dumbra for the Dream Team. A turbo. It goes down, free kick, Dream Team. That's uh, Akinjide Dou. Dishing out some rough stuff to the Worry Wolves striker. A table broke into the league a couple of seasons back. He departed for trials abroad and his form. I'm not sure he's back to his best, uh, Bowie, because uh, when this young man broke onto the scene in the domestic league, he was red hot. Indeed, when he's in full flight, he's difficult to stop. Zaharadin Bello. I guess he's passed through. The race now. Musa Mohammed. You can hardly get the ball away from him when he's like that. Free kick flying Eagles. Very quickly taken. No waste of time here. They're in a hurry. They want to come back on level terms. And uh, corner kick, they can see they, they end the winner corner kick there. It was Obano who headed that one. Desperate clearance. And uh, you could say desperate situations call for desperate moves. Goalkeeper Emmanuel Daniel is himself worse and uh, not a very good penalty free kick. And what do we have? A free kick just on the edge of the box there. Oh, is actually is it inside the box? It seems to be very close to the six yard box, but the referee is not pointing at the penalty spot. And you can see when this ball came across here. Well, that was extremely dangerous play from Okechuku Azubike. He had his uh, studs as high as the face of uh, the Flying Eagles player. Now, when referees do this, you wonder. You give a penalty for a similar uh, event, and then it happens a second time. You give an indirect free kick, free kick inside the box. Why they do that? Well, it beats me at times because a foul in the box is a foul in the box. And uh, that's exactly what the Flying Eagles seem to be saying. The argument is that this should be a penalty. It defies reason sometimes uh, when certain things happen. But Anetia Udo is not uh, just any referee. He's a FIFA referee. He knows what he is doing. The Flying Eagles still in with a chance here to draw level. The Dream Team arranging themselves right on the goal line there to make sure there's no loophole, there's no opening. It will require somebody with a very good left foot. Do the Flying Eagles have that? Can they deliver on this occasion? Can they make good on the enchanting performance they put up all tournament? This is the 50, 64 million Naira question, I can tell you. Well, a bit of uh, holly bolly going on inside the 18 yard box the referee gesticulating what would you do repeat it to the roof of the net or pass to a, a teammate it will require somebody with a very very left foot indeed it's uh, godwin savior that's coming off for the dream team and going in to take his place is another godwin godwin udibu now i i, I love this by uh, samson siasia it, it shows a, a coach who's got uh, you know tactical ability. Yes, the goal might still be scored from that indirect free kick, meaning they cannot take a direct route to goal, but this change certainly uh, gives this team chance to strategize a little bit more and relax and cool very easily throw off the flying eagles. It's a tactical move and yes, yeah, has proven to be quite the tactician. It would appear that the flying eagles don't have a very good left foot set-piece taker. 
Uh, that uh, whichever way you look at it, they have a chance now. A very good one. You will expect that maybe they will roll the ball across and somebody will hit it. But with the number of green shirts must on that goal line, it's difficult to see how the ball could just uh, slip through. We've got to see it. They happen to know what transpires. Uh, the referee says, you wait until the ball is hit, not until the whistle is blown. The ball has to be hit before you come out over enthusiasm from Azubiko Kechuku and him a yellow card. He should have known better. But the free kick still coming. And uh, he's still looking aggressive like a lion there, roaring. Uh, but the free kick to the Flying Eagles must be taken. The referee takes his time to note it down in his uh, little pocket book. Musa Mohamed standing over the ball. It's an indirect free kick. It has to be touched at least twice. And uh, the defense, the wall does its job there. And the goalkeeper came out very bravely. It's a corner kick, but I'm sure that's a lot less dangerous than uh, that free kick and where it came. Well, at what goalkeeper save penalties? Musa Mohamed, and that one comes across. And what an equalizer that was. What a finish from Bernard Bulboa. What a strike and the time to get it to. This really is the battle royale. And it's a cliffhanger by every stretch of the imagination. What a goal. <laughs> I was just about to say, I had seen goalkeeper save penalties, punch it into corner kick. And when the corner came across, they were scored. And uh, before I could even complete what I wanted to say, they had proved me right. That was a super, super finish by Bernard Bobo. He played it into the ground. Very difficult to stop. There was no way. In fact, Entebo's head guided the goal, but it was already on target. And that goal certainly will be credited to Bernard Bobo, the Flying Eagles uh, forward. So it's the Dream Team 2, the Flying Eagles 2. And we've got a game on our hands. And boy, do we have a game on our hands now, really. The two sides on even kill now, 2-2. Two -two. The goals are raining, but the goals are raining evenly on both sides. Zahara Dinbelo getting the ball away. And uh, that touch from Taiwa when he was uh, not quite accurate. Wanted to tip the pass to his teammate. And uh, the dream team going down. And the referee finally to throw into the Flying Eagles. You could see how disappointed, obviously disappointed, Sincere Mwenfu is. Then they come again, Onyekachi. Well, that's actually Azubike Kechuku who was robbed of the ball, legally so, says the referee. And the Flying Eagles come forward now. Flying Eagles looking good. The ball sent across and missed. And look, an opportunity. Unbelievable. Chris Agri for people. He just sent it over the bar. It was almost a direct hit at goal. That surely should have been goal number three for the Flying Eagles. <laughs> uh, football is a very funny game. Because this was right on the penalty spot. The one he scored in the first half, much tougher from an acute angle. And this one, he was wide open and decided to slash his effort over the top. Free kick to the dream team. The fans here seem to disagree. The man that was brought down, Tiondoli Tombara. Tiondoli Tombara, and uh, he wants some assistance. Well, time for substitution. The man who just scored for the Flying Eagles, Bernard Bobo, 
is, is going to be substituted and his place will be taken by Wasiu Jimo. Wasiu Jimo is from the Quara Football Academy in Ilori and has been an ever present for the Flying Eagles in this competition. It's lived up to billing as the final match of this 15 match marathon Super 4 Invitational organized by the League Management Company. Quite a few people believe this should be uh, an annual event, an expanded Super 4. I'm sure if that were to be the case, it has to be renamed Super 6. And uh, quite a bit of controversy about this and who the goal is to be credited to. It was well hit there and uh, it's, well, we understand it's just been ruled an own goal by Ogene Karoye Tebo. And that means the referee insists the ball was on its way away from goal when it was diverted into the net. Middle, it was headed for the middle of, of, of the net. So I, I really do want to believe if they say it's an Ogene Karo Etebo own goal, then I, 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 I certainly will have something to say about that. But more changes afoot, and uh, the player coming in is Stanley Okorum. Another change, and uh, he has second place of Christopher Madaki who was booked in the first half. Free kick to the Dream Team. 2-2 two -two at the moment. Can they make it three? That's the big question. Another substitution taking place. It's Prince Agri making way for Chidera as for the Flying Eagles. Prince Agri is coming up. Chidera Eze is coming on. He's as uh, incisive as Agre. He's as goal hungry as Agre. Rolled across and headed away by the Flying Eagles. Obano now. He decides to go backwards. The Dream Team are like wounded lions now. They charge forward again, looking for an opening. The ball runs away from them for a throw in to the Flying Eagles. The Dream Team really have um, been looking for another leader since conceding that equalizer. And we have a free kick going their way, the Dream Team. Yeah, for the substitutions, uh, Shego Dudua has been uh, taken off by Samson Siasia and his place has been taken by Faisal Sani. He's really making sure that uh, every player here gets a feel of the tournament. Obi Namuobudu. Hope he doesn't get confused in the process. Zara Dinbelo. A very solid performer, very quiet, unassuming, not given to being the center of attraction, but very effective nonetheless. Zaharadin Bello of the Golden Eaglets frame. Another good free kick, a free kick from a good position coming to the Flying Eagles. And is the substitute Wasiu Jimo. <laughs> Upended by Okechuku Azubike. Now, Azubike is really, as far as I'm concerned, very, very lucky to still be on the pitch. He, 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 he was booked earlier in this game, and he's had a 
lot of challenges that attended in free kicks being given. For some reason, he is living a charmed life. He's still on the pitch. Still on the pitch, another substitution, a rush of substitutions all of a sudden. And uh, for the golden, the flying eagles, it is Obi Namwobodo who is equally on a yellow card. Yes, he is. I, I agree with you. And uh, his place will be taken by Abdullahi Alpha. Abdullahi Alpha, he's played all the matches played by the flying eagles, either starting or from the bench. Except the last one they played. But uh, it's uh, like for like. Obi Namwobodo has uh, proven to be quite mesmerizing, but the dribbling master, perhaps, of the flying eagles is surely Abdullahi Alpha. Also from the famed under-17 under squad that won the World Cup in Nigeria a couple of years back. A free kick. Another free kick. Ifani Ifani is standing over it. And so also is uh, Musa Mohammed. You want to think it's probably Ifani Ifani who will take it from the way they are positioned. You would think that Musa Mohammed is stood directly behind the ball. But uh, you never can tell. For the free kick. There they go now, the flying eagles. If Fanny Fanny goes for it and it's over the bar, at least two yards over the bar. And uh, perhaps in the end, who knows, maybe Musa Mohammed should have taken it on hindsight. I was just going to say that because he is the recognized set piece executor or executioner for the flying eagles. I, well, I can't just forget that effort against Mexico in the final of the 2013 FIFA World Cup in the United Arab Emirates. It was from a further distance, and the way he buried that, it was uh, really wonderful uh, to see. Dream team, probing, looking to come forward. Chidera Eze should be able to steal that one, and the flying could steal it. It's Chidera Eze now, ranging forward, a great pass coming, and a tip cup up. Well, it's missed, or is it? It's not quite missed yet. And saved, and another effort, and saved again. What a... Well, this is action at its most frenetic. The flying is so close, and yet ending up too far away from that elusive third goal. Daiwa Wuniyi, he cannot believe it. Exactly what I was talking about earlier. That man, he needs to be more clinical in front of goal. There was absolutely no reason why he would be passing the ball after he has beaten the goalkeeper and beaten the defender. The flag goes up finally on uh, Taiwa Wuniyi. The assistant referee waited and waited until he was about to make contact with the ball and he lifted the flag. Now you can see here a good steal by Chidera Eze. Very good awareness to roll the ball. Poor defending initially. He runs the goalkeeper, beats the defender. He should strike. The net was wide open there. And uh, a, a, a cacophony of errors. Well, the major culprit actually is not even Taiwan. When he, I think it's uh, Ablahi Alpha. He had a clear shot on goal. The goalkeeper was already going the wrong way. He contrived to send the ball the same way the goalkeeper was going. He should have put the ball straight in front of him. There was no reason to dress the ball in any manner. And uh, somehow that must count as one of the worst misses of his career. Well, let's not uh, forget that these are still young men. So once in a while, they make the odd error, but they've really given us a spectacle here at the member of the National Stadium. And well, a super finish. It's a second for getting a at the ball. And maybe redemption after he was adjudged to have scored an own goal there. It's the dream team back in front against the run of play. And uh, it's time for recrimination. Self blame is the other, other of the day for the Flying Eagles. They broke away in a blitz, and then there was a ball in the back of the net. A second for a table, the third for the Dream Team, and they lead 3 2. And it needs to be said here, yeah, Ogene Kare table. And look at that, the Eagles, the fine Eagles, we are sixes and sevens. Well, incidentally, that's the third goal by a table in this game. Two of them counted for his side. One has been adjudged as an own goal, and so he is the top scorer in today's game in more ways than one if he's heading back to the player we used to know then that will be awesome but uh tombara tiongoli's day is done 
and his place will be taken by Sunday at Detunji. Another taking part for the first time in this competition. What a time to come on. Every player loves to come on when the team is in the lead. And at Detunji certainly will add some steel in midfield. At least five substitutions already by Samson Siasia's side. And it would appear that he really intends to substitute every player here. Abdullahi Alpha is not having the best of time since coming on as substitute uh, in place of Obin Namuobodo. He should have scored for the Flying Eagles and uh, they should have been ahead by 3-2 instead of conceding a goal and going down 2-3. It was uh, an immediate response. The Flying Eagles come forward again. Looking for a way to go forward, it is 3-2. A five-goal thriller already it is, but you have this feeling that we've not seen the end of scoring today. And the only other game that witnessed five goals in this competition, the Flying Eagles were also involved, but that day they were outright winners. 4-1, they demolished the Dolphins. And that's the man whose return to the dugout seems to have been the difference. Samson Siasia wearing a t-shirt with the word winner and his side certainly in the lead here and looking like on their way to three points but that would not be easy because this Flying Eagles team never say die that's their middle name. That would not be enough either to upset the Apple Cats. Well I think that's a little bit harsh on Peter Onyekachi because uh, they seem to have won that ball fair and square. The flag stays down, but uh, the goalkeeper had to come out to connect them. Dream Team looking strong all the way through. The Flying Eagles up against it now. An overlapping run. And uh, not well marshaled there by Sincere Muenfe. Wanted to take care of his man. And he couldn't do that. And the Flying Eagles get a lifeline. Ball forward, maybe not the best option. Pass down the line easily, taken care of. Manuel Daniel. The two goalkeepers have been pretty busy in this game. Mustafa Abdullahi. Gets the ball to Chidara Eze, who languidly, easily keeps the ball into play. And that cross smashed away, but not quite. Abdullahi is still heading the ball through. Uh, but the Dream Team should clear now. Onyekachi, he gets a return. It's two on one. And what does he do? He waste a little time waiting for support to come. Support not quick in coming, but a turbo now. A turbo to Dumbra. Dumbra, ball backwards. And uh, it is the dream team. Stan Yokorum was involved there. Akinjide. Good interchange of passes. Good play from the Flying Eagles from both sides, as a matter of fact. And there's uh, a Din Beru for the Flying Eagles. He wanted the return. He didn't get it. Ball forward, looking for Wuni and Chidera Eze. And a uh, back pass to goalkeeper. Daniel Daniel. Inside the final 20 minutes of this game, inside the final 20 minutes of today's activities, and inside the final 20 minutes of the tournament Super 4 Invitational 2015, right here at the Abuja National Stadium, it's been football unlimited. It's been excitement unlimited. It's been expression of skills unbridled here. And uh, the ball is given away, a dangerous one. The, goal, the dream team coming forward. It is that man. And uh, Dumbra. Dumbra wants a return, he gets it. Dumbra all of a sudden playing second fiddle to quite a number of players here. He was the main man leading up to this final game for the Dream Team. But all of a sudden, well, you have a whole lot of superstars here now. 
para <laughs> what the flag I, I think the flag went up rather late Taiwan when he doesn't think he was offside but uh, the referee did think so the second assistant referee for the day Issa Usman another FIFA referee from Katsina State uh, talking about uh, Dumbra he probably should see it from the cop half full angle because um, he's also lucky to be one of the few from the team that played for the under 23s when the other half were in Tunisia to be retained in this team after the return of Samson Siasia. <laughs> well, point well made, Kelechi. That's absolutely true because uh, most of them didn't even make the bench. Uh, but he, here he was starting the game and still on the pitch up now. He must have made some significant contribution. Handball. Ball handled there by Sunday Adetunji. The man that came in for Tiondoli Tombara. Abdullahi Alpha. Flying Eagles. Ball forward. Ifani Ifani. Should be able to keep that ball in. He keeps it in. He drives it across. And the header. And an equalizer. What a goal there. A diving header. And finally he says. I am Chidera Eze. You sh keep quiet because you ain't seen nothing yet. What a goal that was. Well, and this is turning into quite a grandstand finish here. It's a super of football we are witnessing here. What a game to wrap up this Super 6. It, it's been absolutely a bandstormer. Chidera Eze, he has been at the heart of most of the good moves made in this second half by the Flying Eagles. Again, the ball spread to the wings. When the ball came in, it wasn't well defended by the Dream Team. And who pops up right in the six-head box? Chidera is a stupid to conquer there. And he squares it again. And, uh, well, I don't know what Samson Sessia will think about this. But at the moment, scoreline, Dream Team 3, Flying Eagles 3. Tyra Wani almost getting the pass through. Looking for Chidera Eze again. Chidera Eze. Tyra Wani. I want to try one, well, one dribble too many. One touch too many. And uh, perhaps he should have pulled the trigger when he had the chance. But this is champagne football. This is exciting soccer. This is football at its best. It's Abdullahi Alpha. He is still smarting from that goal. He failed to convert. And the long pass going through. Two of them racing for the ball. The flag goes up. I think it's uh, adjusted. Well, maybe not quite penalty, uh, not quite uh, offside, but uh, his shoulder went into that tackle very solidly. Was you, Jimo? That was you, Jimo, the substitute. And that's uh, Chidera Eze. Wonderful contribution he's made. Indeed, because he came on as a substitute to take the place of Prince Agri. Prince Agri himself, who got a goal while he was on, he left and Chidera Eze came. And we saw in him a very exciting prospect. He has shown it in every game he has played in this tournament. He moves like a razor blade and he really connected magnificently to that one to make it 3-3. Perhaps a deserving result at this stage of the game between these two sides who have played their hearts out. Ibrahim Alpha team the ball forward. Akinjide needs some support. Akinjide receives a nudge. And the Alpha couldn't control the ball very well. The counter attack going at the counter. The dream team. Tumbara. He wanted a return. His pass wasn't particularly good. And good footwork there from the, the flying eagles. Said Abdul Ganyu also involved. And uh, Taiwa Awani. They take it easy. Ifanyi Ifanyi. Flying Eagles, Ifani Ifani again. Not a good pass, goes to an opponent, and uh, perhaps he took it too hurriedly. The dream team coming forward again. It is the substitute, is coming forward, is looking good. And it goes down to win a free kick for his side. Good contribution from Sunday Adetunji. Yeah, he had a bit of uh, Sa Sahid Abdul Ganiyu. He knows he's going to get a free kick. His languid movements too much for the Flying Eagles defender. And in his attempts to get the ball, he had, you see that 
got the man and didn't get any of the ball. Free kick. Uh, maybe Sahid Abdul Ghaniu a bit unlocked. He also appeared to get a little bit of the ball in the replay. Yeah, he's been given. He's given away free kick. Ginger movement off the pitch for Sunday at Detunji. Closely watched by the Dream Team's medical team. FIFA badged official Ferdinand Aniete Udo directing the flying eagles to where the world should be. We've seen six goals in the opening 78 minutes. We've got 12 minutes left. And at this rate, nobody is leaving the stadium because uh, these two teams appear quite capable of uh, knocking him more goals. So finally, Newman Dubra's day is done. He will be substituted. He's had a very, very good tournament, as far as I am concerned. And Chisom Eze it is, who will come on to take his place. Chisom Eze, he's seen some good action in the tournament thus far. But that free kick from the Dream Team, Okay, Chukwa Zubike is there. It is okay, Chukwa Zubike. He rolls it across. A good one. And they're offside. It would not have counted. It would not have counted. The first one, yes, if it had gone in, but not the second touch on the ball from Ogene Karetebo, who is on a hat trick. Yeah. Well, a genuine hat trick. A genuine hat trick. <laughs> Bam, any three from four. If he gets another one. It will be his hat trick, but he would have put the ball in the net four times. Free kick this time inside the center circle. In the half of the Dream Team to the Flying Eagles. 3-3 three, three the score line. Oh, Chidera is again. Looking for some opportunity to snap up. Daniel Emmanuel denied him as well as the flag. But this certainly has been the high point of this tournament. The football has been super. Sundia Detunji handled the ball. It's lucky the referee is not giving a free kick, a, a yellow card to him. Went down and uh, scooped up the ball with his hand. It was quite deliberate, you could see that. And a little nod from behind by Taiwo Awuni didn't go unnoticed. Eagle eyed Anietia Udo is the man with the whistle in the middle. The, the dream team looking for that way through. Ten minutes to the end of it all here. Uh, the dream team Chisum Eze is one of the men who have been operating with the, well, if you like, home based dream team. Looked like a handball. It was spotted by the assistant referee quite correctly. Akinjide handled the ball as uh, playing the innocent, but the referee's attention was called to it by his assistant. His first assistant, Baba. The replays usually show a, a, a different thing entirely from, from some of what the officials uh, see. His hand may have touched it, but that has to be the slightest of touches. <laughs> I, I, I just want to say something. I, I know this vanishing spray 
but that this spray vanished before it got on the top. Well, actually, it vanished from the container, <laughs> not on the top itself. So it had to go for a refill, as it were. But Lafrenke coming to the Dream Team, one-man defensive wall. It's Chidera Eze, the Dream Team, with another bite on the cherry now. Swung in there and uh, headed harmlessly away into touch. That wasn't the best of deliveries from Azubike Okechuku, but I'm sure the Flying Eagles are not the happier for that. A little touch to the back. And the aim team coming forward again, looking to go into that box. A very tricky, but uh, it's traditionally a uh, striker's set move. Taiwa Awoni, the flag stays down. Awoni goes down. Awoni is still struggling for that ball. And the referee says play on. Awoni was caught in two minds there. Should he go down for the penalty? He decided to stay on his feet. And the spot kick opportunity was lost. Well, it goes to show that sometimes, perhaps, when you should go down, you really do need to go down. And uh, if he had... Chances are a penalty could have been awarded to his side. But really it is to be commended that he stayed on his feet. That's one thing that's done only too easily and too often by players. Uh, it doesn't make them earn the respect of the fans who come to watch good football. So kudos there to Taiwo Awoni. He's not been as dominant in this game as he has been since the tournament kicked off. He has been well checked and well marshaled there by the non-nonsense defense of the Dream Team. Well, the fre referee, very lucky for the Flying Eagles. The referee is not given anything. Otherwise, uh, you would think that uh, Mustafa Abdullahi would have been in trouble there. Uh, Chisomeze <laughs> gave a, a very long, hopeful look in the direction of Aniete Odo and nothing was happening. And he decided, well, I've had enough. Of rolling around on the top. And the dream team looking for that goal that might just make the difference. It's not easy in coming. You would think that the fans here would want to see a draw between these two sides. They've given a solid account of themselves. The flying eagles building on what they've done all tournament long. And uh, the referee says it's a free kick looked like an, almost a dive to me but the referee was closer to the action and he says Akinji Day was brought down and the yellow card into the bargain for Ogene Kare Tebo. Well, he seems to have seen it all in this game so far. <laughs> He's uh, scored a rush of goals, one of them against his own side. He now ends up picking up a yellow card. It must be a full day for Ogene Kare Tebo here. Uh, well, to top it up uh, this kind of day is for him to get a hat-trick and then take his shirt off and then get a second booking <laughs> and uh, we know uh, that yes he's got a full game now uh, if this is not the final change i'll be surprised the player coming in is uh, michael ebe to replace the man who well he, he now cannot get a hat trick what we have on the pitch now a number of them that played uh, with the Flying Eagles all along. Michael Ibe was one of them. Chisum Eze, of course, uh, also one of them that came on as a substitute. And uh, you have the others who started, like uh, Dumbra. Newman Dumbra, who is still there. Well, there has been no chance at all today for Lotsini Chu. The man that fires from all cylinders from just about anywhere on the pitch. Dream team coming forward. They want to get their nose in front again, but uh, the referee says it's a free kick to the Flying Eagles. Akinjide for the Flying Eagles now. Akinjide again. Ifani, Ifani. Who's long looking for Taiwa Awani. Awani needs some support there. Awani beat his man. He was through. He's still bulldozing his way through. He gets the pass across, but it's uh, collected now by the Dream Team. Finally, the Dream Team win a free kick. Resulting from the tenacity 
of uh, that, uh, I think it's Alpha. And the Alpha, the bench of Samson yes, yeah, they want to win this one and uh, to make their point, really. Fans here are torn between seeing the flying eagles win and then lose on the final day. Maybe the current scoreline, the best. The way both teams have played, you want them something. This has been a fabulous game of football. Hardly anything to distinguish between the two in terms of skill. They have been wonderful. In terms of goal scoring, we've seen a whole lot. A six-goal thriller at the moment and still two minutes and a bit left of regulation time. That uh, Abdullahi Alpha pass attempted was meant for his namesake Mustafa Abdullahi and it didn't go through. Flying Eagles building again, Ifani Ifani now. Ifani Ifani with the through pass and the Flying Eagles racing away again. Are uh, they going to make it uh, that final salvo? There they come and good defending, the defender tracking that run all the way through. I'm making sure it didn't happen. But if I find you again for the Flying Eagles, they come charging back. They're not giving up. They're not letting up just yet. But the Dream Team take over and they want to try a little bit of counter attacking of their own. Very solid body check there from Peter Onyekachi. The referee allows play to continue. But the Flying Eagles pick up the ball. Great work there from that man in the defense, Saeed Abdullah Ganil. Well, football at its best you want to say this is what's pretty much what everybody expected and the dream team with a chance now on goal and a shot called for the shot didn't come but danger is not over yet as they come again uh, that ball pushed forward the dream team finally retrieving the flying eagles retrieving the ball Chidera is a long pass searching for Taiwa when he the pass gets to him and when he looking for support the support comes and Akinji Dena for the Flying Eagles. Ibrahim Alpha. Abdullahi Alpha rather. And the first touch was a bit poor, but that ball still retained by the Flying Eagles. They come forward, left the ball forward, and some desperate clearance from the Dream Team. That was a wild slash at the ball inside his own box. And uh, it was not immediately cleared, but that has to go down as a foul from Musa Mohammed just badged the, into the back of the Dream Team defender. Well, we're still seeing some substitution going on this time. It is for the Flying Eagles. And uh, I think that the man that's been substituted receives the applause and the acclaim of the fans here. Yeah, of course, uh, Musa Yaya, who has scored one goal in this competition. A very good one indeed on the opening day as a substitute against Enyiba. He replaces Akinjide in the whoop. And let it be said that Akinji Deido has played his heart out in this game. We're in the very final minute of normal time here. Is this uh, what will result? Well, nothing resulting just yet for the Dream Team. Another pass going forward looking for Taiwa Awoni. Awoni beats his man. Awoni is still there. Awoni is still racing through. And he decides to pass the ball. You would have thought he was going to pull the trigger. He didn't do that. And we have two minutes added on time because it's full 90 minutes already. Two minutes added here, and what a game we have witnessed this afternoon. What an enchanting encounter between these two teams, worthy of their places as representatives of the country at uh, the competitions, the under-20 and the under-23 sides. What a game. Fantastic game of football, where you forget to say that that minute or those minutes added are the final two minutes of this year's uh, Super 6. A wonderful festival of football, week-long festival of football here at the Maple of the National Stadium. Fans have given a wider claim, asking for more next year. And what a game to wrap it all up, a six-goal thriller. Well, we may even have uh, a stick in the tail, a very last-minute chance to produce something for the Dream Team. And this must be a better delivery for Azubi Keo Kechuku, his last delivery from just about the same position didn't yield much dividend. If he gets it right, the Flying Eagles may yet hit the humble pie here. Very long ball forward and left on its own. The ball had crossed the line. It's a goal kick, says the referee. 
And uh, I have a feeling Musa Mohammed knew that, that he just wanted to be sure he, he collected the ball and needed to run down the clock as well because uh, the ball has been recalled to the goalkeeper Joshua Enaholo. It has to be said also that he's given a good account of himself in this encounter. Well, the enthusiasm of these players, I, I, I would really think it far-fetched that they wanted to run down the clock. They just want to keep this ball moving into the opposition half. And the Taiwan when he is shot there. Did the goalkeeper get his hand to it? No, says the referee. And when he almost ending it with uh, an outstanding goal there. Well, the final whistle, it's all over here. It's the end of day four, the end of game three for day four, the end of the tournament, the Super Four Invitational for 2015. It has been really amazing football here. It has been absolutely wonderful football. It has been a festival of football of sorts. That man was one of the standout players. That man, another of the standout players, Joshua Inaholo, he's been wonderful. Everybody has contributed his quota here. Six teams involved here. Four of them representatives of Nigeria on the continent. And we're talking about Cardo Pillars, Enyimba International, Worry Wolves, and Dolphins of Port Harcourt. And of course, the under 20 national team, the Flying Eagles, and this team, the Dream Team, the under 23 side. That's how it has come here. Well, it has been absolutely enthralling here. And you needed to have been here in the stadium to see the action. And sure, those of you at home must have been enjoying it as well. This is the Super 4 Invitational for 2015. The Flying Eagles, they are worthy champions here. They've ended it with 13 points. The Dream Team has scanned 9 points. And uh, the difference is quite clear, or was clear before this final encounter. But it's been something to take home, a day to savour a tournament to Savo as well. A tournament that Nigerians are asking be made an annual event, at least expanded to the six it has been this time. It has left everybody satisfied. Obano was great for his side. Goalkeeper Emmanuel Daniel was also outstanding. And all of them, every single player here, has paid his dues. And you must accept that this really has been wonderful football at its very best. It has ended here in Abuja on the final day. Dream Team, 6-3 and the Pine Eagles 3. And you can see the Flying Eagles, the champions, going across to the officials here, officials of the league management company, organizers of this competition, receiving their medals. The man at the head of the queue the chairman of the league management company and the other officials i can see another member of the league management company Shehudiko. chairman of nigeria league club chairman isaac danladi and of course the chairman of the lmc like i said before and uh, it's been a wonderful week of football that began on the 24th of January. It's seen a lot of goals, especially in the final match day. This game that just ended, a six goal three ladder finished all square at 3-3. Three, three. And uh, the boys were well worth their victory. Four wins out of five and one draw for a total points haul of 13. Their closest challengers, the under 23 team, finishing with nine points after two victories and uh, three draws it's been a successful tournament fans at home already saying they would want this to be done again next year initially it used to be the super four involving just the four teams that have made it through to continental uh, football for nigeria but this year in its wisdom, the LMC decided that they would love the under-20 team, the Flying Eagles, and the under-23 team, the Dream Team, to be part of this show. And uh, what a success it had been. Ndokobade Manogarba, men used to celebrating success with the under-17s. This time around, celebrating success with the under-20 team. And that man in your picture, Taiwo Awoniye, by far and away, the player of the tournament here, 
he might not have scored so many goals, but he has been the overwhelming choice as the most valuable player of the tournament. Taiwo Awoniyi, he won the Under-17 World Cup with Nigeria in the United Arab Emirates in 2013 and plays for Kalma in Sweden. It, he might have scored just the one goal here. He set up so many others and lit up the tournament with his repertoire of skills. Flying Eagles of Nigeria, winners of the 2015 Glow Super 4 Invitational Tournament, and they have been well worth their victory. That's the captain, Musa Mohammed, with the championship trophy. It's supposed to be for the clubs, but they were invited, and here they are celebrating victory. Well, it has surely been a good day at the office for the Super Flying Eagles. It has been a good day at the office for everyone who has followed this tournament. It has been a wonderful experience, an experience that we want repeated, an experience the fans want repeated, an experience they want made a permanent fixture in the calendar of football in Nigeria. It has been absolutely breathtaking. It's been a thrilling, a thrilling, thrilling 10 days here. Wonderful tournament it has been. And at the end, perhaps the worthy champions, as they turned out to be, Ndukubade, telling the boys, look, we've got to take more photographs. Memories are made of these. And uh, this is something they want to remember. Of course, you can see all the others. Some of them, uh, about what could have been, it was not Datsi Roha, one of the players of the national teams. And uh, in the end, you must know that this has been a tournament worthy of its name and worthy of the time we have put to it. It has really been wonderful from all of us here. And we want to thank you for being part of it. From all of us, thank you for joining. And it's back to Moses Praise. There are worlds where the rules of nature conflict with